blowing up. There's no time for that. We gotta get there. Keep your shirt on, Mr. Clinton. You forgetting where we are? The Apache's watching every move we make. John Law's always acting scared of Apaches. No sand at all, any of you. I told you I'd take care of this, and I will. Now put that gun away and take them off before you get us both killed. Well, now you can take yours off, but I ain't losing mine. Legends of Arizona Indians told about Spanish explorers who found gold and silver and stored it in a cave until they could take it to Spain. When the explorers were killed in the battle between rival tribes, their gold remained for white men to try to find. And on one occasion, the treasure caused trouble for Marshal Wyatt Earp. We won't be gone any longer than we have to. Well, you don't worry about nothing here, boy. You just take care of yourself. You too, Mr. Song. Just thanks you for coming to San Carlos, Marshal Herb. No thanks is needed. Please sit. When you were agent to Apaches, Mr. Clum, there was no trouble for us. Well, I thank you, Chief Natchez. I wish I were here now. How bad is the situation? I am more and more afraid for my people. Around the council fires, Chirokawa braves speak only of past victories. Our dead fighting chiefs are becoming warriors, not farmers. Or they drink white man's whiskey. Chief Natchez, they're not getting it in Tombstone. Have you been able to get any of them to tell you where they buy the whiskey? They tell me nothing. For many sons, things are not good at San Carlos. They blame me, the son of Cochise. My young braves listen only to those who would go with Geronimo. They will go. Across the border, huh? My guess is Geronimo has lost too many braves in these raids the last few months. Isn't that true, Chief Natchez? Well, now, where else is he going to recruit new warriors but here? Mr. Clum, I promised Cochise, my father, I would keep peace. And I have kept it. I do not want to go on the war trail with Geronimo. But I must have help. What's the agent doing? Well, he's the cause of all their unhappiness, Warden. He hates Apaches. He throws them in jail. He allows them no other recourse. He steals our rations. Sells them to men in Tucson. He's in with the 10% rate. Everything points to it. Well, then you tell me how catching whiskey peddlers is going to cure that? Well, he's under investigation right now, White. All we can hope to do is to keep the young braves from going over to Geronimo before he's replaced. But your whiskey speaks for Geronimo, not for peace. It's impossible to cover the whole territory, but I... Can watch the outlaw hangouts, patrol more trails. We shall see. You have been a good friend, Mr. Club. I thank you, Chief Natchez. Marshal Earp here is your good friend, too. I give you my word, I'll do everything possible. Trouble for you means trouble for me. Goodbye. Goodbye, Chief. Uh, Nula, if, uh, if you'll just tell us where that cave is, if there's any gold there, well, uh, me and Fan will do all the work. It is forbidden to speak of it. Oh, come on, Nula, you're the one that told us about the legend in the first place. I told the legend this story to my friends. It is only a legend. Oh, you Apaches, you just want all that gold and silver for yourselves, that's all. No, the Yellowstone belongs to the gods, not to Apaches. Not to you either. Nula! Ike! The whiskey. Oh. Yeah, whiskey. Well, that's all right. Forget it. Look, we brought you a present. We brought you a jug of whiskey. It'll make us all feel better. Makes me thirsty just thinking about it. Yeah, try it out. See if it's good. <laughs> it is good. <laughs> Thank you. And Nula, you know, uh, them chair cowers are going to like what we got in them barrels, huh? Yeah, it's, uh, me and Ike, uh, well, it isn't everyone that wouldn't take the chance to sell you whiskey more than once. That is so. <laughs> yeah. 
Do it, uh, long, hot ride back to the reservation, Dula. Come on, have another swallow. Well, we're not going to be leaving for a spell. Now, why don't you just come over here and join us? Sit down and have a drink. Come on. <laughs> hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. We better take him with us. What for? He told us where the cave was, didn't he? We don't need him. Let him sleep there. Papa, you said it yourself. Frank and the boys ought to be back from the border by now. Yeah, Papa, they, they might be in trouble. Get to the point, boys. You've been talking around it long enough. Well, let Ike and me ride down to the border and see what the trouble is. Won't uh, take us more than three or four days. Well, if you're that fidgety, go on. A week in the saddle will slow you down. Thanks, Papa. <laughs> Not so fast, boys. Ain't you forgot something? Oh, I... I forgot about the whiskey, Papa. I'm, I'm sorry. That's better. Now, Ike, you're the oldest. You take care of your brother. No fighting, you hear me? Yeah, Papa. So I drawed my guns and I shot him down. Cause he was a trying to run my town. Caught him on the trail with a string of ponies loaded with whiskey barrels. He is drunk yourself. This here jug's plumb empty. They trusted you, a boy? Mr. Clum, I am warrior. I buy whiskey for Chiricahua warriors. You sound like a plain errand boy to me. Nula, anybody else buying whiskey for your tribe? Cowboys sell only to me. They trust Nula. They are my friends. Well, they must be very good friends. They bring me presents. We drink. We talk together. After I pay for barrels. The whiskey traders aren't usually that generous. Even with customers they trust. These, um, these friends of yours, these cowboys, they want anything in return for their, uh, present? They wish me to speak to them of the Yellowstone. They knew the legend. They want to find the cave. What cave? Oh, there's an old Indian legend, wide about some Spanish explorers came to Arizona. They lived with the Papago tribe. They found gold and silver, and they mined it and hid it in a cave to take back to Spain. Later on, there was an Indian war. The Papago tribe was attacked and killed. So were the Spaniards. What have become of the gold and silver? Yeah, nobody's ever seen it, Mr. Gibbs. It must still be there. And they say the Indians know where it is. Yeah. Ain't much them Indians don't know about these here hills. No. Did you tell them? No, Lord, would never do that. He's been taught and trained never to tell a white man where to find gold, let alone lead him to it. But they do not believe me. They want me to drink whiskey, so I tell. But I fool them. I say the cave is on San Carlos Reservation. 
You told them that? They cannot go there. The land belongs to us by white man's word. They cannot take the yellow stone from San Carlos. Well, nothing will stop them if they find gold there. And if they don't, you're going to be mighty sorry, Sonny. What were their names? Mr. Clum, it is not as the marshal says. Nola, you hear me. Tell him who they were. The two brothers, sons of Nehemiah Clanton. I can Finn Clanton? I do not tell them the right place. John, you go to San Carlos for me. Take him with you. All right, White. What'll I tell Natchez? You tell him everything. Warn him if the Clantons come hunting for gold to keep his people out of sight and send for me. You must do nothing to stop them. If even one white man is shot, you know what it'll mean. I'll warn him, White. Come on, over. Mr. Gibbs, get the saddlebags. Quiet down there. Then Clinton's done already left. They wait until his gunfighters come up from the border. But it don't seem like he's getting ready. No, it doesn't. I wonder if Ike and Finn could have done this on their own. Yeah, they got more sense than that. Well, not if they're trying to show their papa they're growing up. Uh, them too. There's always a cause in trouble. Well, I'll post a deputy out here. We'll go on back and wait until we hear from Chief Natchez. We just gonna sit on this keg of dynamite? The fuse is already done lit. Now, Mr. Gibbs, you've been blown up before? Yeah, but I ain't used to it yet. Neither Roscoe. They are alone. Go, watch them. Do not let them see you. Nothing. Like I told you, we should have brought Nula with us. It wasn't my idea to get him drunk. Don't tell me that. You're the one that kept egging him on. Little drink, Nula, just one more little drink, or one more little drink. He got him so drunk, he didn't know what he was saying. We should have made him show us. Ben, why don't you grow up? Ain't no Apache gonna show us where this cave is. They wouldn't do it if I put a pistol to their heads. Well, maybe not. There's about an hour of light left. I'm gonna go up here and have a look. Hey, Ike, a cave. Where? Maybe that's the one. You know, you know, Ben, Papa's gonna say that we did real good after we tell him about all this gold we're gonna find. Papa's gonna say I did real good. This was my idea. And I'm gonna find that gold before you. Oh, well, will you just do that? That'll make you a real big man. You always was jealous of me, Ike. You know, being older don't prove nothing. <laughs> don't make me laugh, Ben. Well, if you're gonna find that cave all by yourself, you better start. Little brother, go on. <laughs> <laughs> Little one goes too close.
Thanks, I get. Well, don't you worry. My papa will take care of you. Where is the brother? He must not escape. He will bring others. Get him! Take him! You didn't go to the border like you said. You went to San Carlos. What I can't figure is how they took him and left you. They should have got both of you. Papa, Papa, I told you. I came around them rocks as soon as I heard him yell. And there they was. They, they already had him caught. All right, and what'd you do? Well, do? Well, there's nothing I could do. Papa, I couldn't shoot. Why not? Didn't you have on that gun belt? Yes, I had on my gun belt, but I couldn't shoot. They was fighting and moving around. If I'd have shot, I'd have shot Ben. Papa, there was nothing I could do. Are you standing there, Ike, and telling me you didn't even try to save your brother? Papa, I told you. They was already dragging him off. There was nothing I could do by myself. Papa, I rode hard. I rode hard all night to come home and tell you. Now, if we just get the boys together, we can go what back. What good will that do? If he's already dead when I get there, it's your job to take care of your brother. It's always been your job. Anything happens to that boy, and you'll get the exact same thing from me, and that's a promise. Oh, Papa, Papa, they, they won't kill him. Why won't they? They got no call to. You was trespassing their land, wasn't you? Well, uh, I guess we... Well, no Clanton caught by himself on Apache land's got one chance in a thousand of living to tell about it. They don't even know he's a Clanton. Maybe not, but they got some mighty fancy ways of finding out. Now, you go get Charlie and send him after the boys. All of them. Well, Papa, if I... Get out of my sight. Yes, sir. <sighs> Chief Natchez took one of them a prisoner? The little one. What happened to Ike? He got away. Now I'm telling his papa about it. Why didn't you leave him alone? We could not, Marshal Earp. He found a burial cave. The gods would have been angry. All right. Not just wait for you and Mr. Clum. You go to Mr. Clum's house. He'll have to ride with you to San Carlos while I stop old man Clanton from going. If I can. you to get off my ranch, uh, Ain't no use hanging around. Ain't nothing you can say to change my mind. I ain't fool enough to believe that you can save Finn. Yeah, but you can, huh? I got a hundred boys coming up from the border. Every one of them good, mean shots. We'll save him. Did you know that Ike and Finn were selling whiskey to the Cherokee? Got nothing to do with it. Who says it was? I do. We caught the Apache that was dealing with him, Nulu. He's also the one that lied to them about gold in the San Carlos. Well, now, if and he lied, why did the Apaches take Finn make sense of? Because Finn was opening up burial caves, not digging for gold. There is no gold up there. How do you know what Finn was doing? Because Chief Natchez sent me a messenger. He also said he'd wait for me to get there before he did anything about your boy. Why? 
He owe you a favor? I just wanted to stop the whiskey. There's too much drinking, too much talk about the war path, joining up with Geronimo. Mm. He know Finn peddle that whiskey? No, I don't think so. You gonna tell him? He'd kill Finn if I did. Mm -hmm. I have to study this. If an I was to call off my boys, give you a chance to get Finn out of there, it means I'd have to go along, make sure there ain't no slip-ups. Mr. Clanton, your outfit is a bunch of hoodlums, thieves, and murderers. I don't like you. The last thing I want to do is save your dirty hides. But if that's what I have to do to prevent an Apache war... I heard enough, Sonny. Now you got your choice. Me or my gunfires. Take your pick. You better get your hat. We'll be late. comes with one man. You gonna let the boy go? No, he is bad. He brings trouble to me and my people. Now, wait a minute. I didn't do anything more than Nula. He bought the whiskey, didn't he? The boy's right, Chief. After all, Nula did tell him that wild story about gold being here in the San Carlos. We wait for Marshal Earp. Then I decide. Boy, you better watch yourself. You got any idea what's gonna happen to you if we can't get you out of here? Now, you aren't blaming me for everything. It ain't my fault that the Indians don't like living on a reservation. Well, I suppose it ain't your fault that you're a greedy little fool either, is it? It took you long enough to get here, Wyatt. We waited for you a long time. Now you bring him. Why? I got as much right here as anybody else. Chief Natchez, I uh, brought the boy's father because he wanted to promise you himself there'd be no more whiskey sold to the Cherokees. Promise to sell no more whiskey while you sidewind and John Law, you low down Judas. Speak. Well, that ain't exactly why I come here. I you got a choice. Blast you up. I'm bossing a big outfit, but I ain't everybody in Arizona. Papa, you shut up. All I can do is give you my word on it. None of my boys will sell whiskey to the Apaches again, and that goes for my whole outfit. Any of them does, I'll shoot them myself personally. It is enough. Bring the boy. You may take him with you. Thank you, Mr. Club. To look at you and see a boy instead of a man must bring great sorrow to your father. Mr. Clanton, the gods already have punished you. Chief Notches bows to their wisdom. Come on, Phoenix. I'll take care of you when I get you home. Phillips, long ride coming in from Tucson. Sure thing, Marshal. You got a conviction on them outlaws? They knew him a prison long before we headed for home. Uh, they was bad, them two. Old Roscoe sure looks tuckered, Mr. Gibbs. He is tuckered. Cool him out before you feed him, will you? Uh, sure will. <laughs> you know something? He babies that mule more than you do yourself. Now, you can trust Roscoe with him. Why, I depend a whole lot on Roscoe. If he is to get sick, then what? Oh, I'd hate to even think about it. Yeah. Well, Mr. 
Dameron. Those uh, cowboy friends of yours were convicted. I'd be happy to give a report for your newspaper. I'm not interested, Up. Those cowboys were innocent. And you persecuted half this town at one time or another. Jailing outlaws ain't exactly persecuting. It's too bad we can't fix editors for telling lies in their newspapers. I've had about all I want from you, Gibbs. Your turn is coming. You try anything with me, Dameron, and I'll squash you like a sour bug. I ain't polite like Wyatt is. There were two newspapers in Tombstone. Mayor John P. Clum's paper supported Wyatt Earp, but the nugget in the frontier days of 1881 was controlled by Wyatt's enemies, the 10% ring, Sheriff Bean, and the Clanton Outlaws, who used the paper to discredit Wyatt Earp. Come on out of there before I... Jake, hold on, Look out. Jake, you quit killing Look out. Jake, you can't find me. Oh, no, not that mule again. He's been acting up again down a number three drift, kicking and a-biting. The men don't want to bother with him no more. It's just too risky. We better put a twist on her nose. There's no use wasting any more time with him. Take the harness off him and turn him loose. Don't do that, please, Mr. Morgan. Please, what, Ollie? I'll give you two dollars for him. What do you want him for, boy? Well, me and Pa can use him for prospecting. Ah, no, 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 that, that mule's no good. Me and Pa can handle him. Here's the two dollars I got saved up. He'll hurt you, boy. No, he won't. Honest. And, and, and Pa needs you, Mr. Morgan. All right. But if you're lying, you know what your Pa'll do to you. It's happened before. Why, sure. Then can I have Jake? You can have him. But you take that mule straight home, and don't you go near him till your Pa gets back. Why, sure. I know Jake. He's awful mean. Here's the two dollars. Now remember your promise, Ollie. You let your pa handle Jake. Yes, sir, Mr. Morgan. And thanks. Come on, Jake. Ollie can tell more lies than any two kids in town. Why, I wouldn't trust him any further than I would that mule. I know, I know. But somehow, a bad boy never gets hurt. His old man isn't a bad sort. If he can handle Jake, we've done him a favor. Yeah, I guess you're... Jake! Jake, come back! Jake! Jake, come back, Jake! Oh, my leg. Papa whipped me for this. He'll kill me. My leg is bleeding off. Ollie, what's wrong? Rascal, he kicked me. He what? He sure enough did. I think my leg's busted. Well, you stay right here. I'll get Dr. Goodfellow. <laughs> oh. Is it going to be all right, Doc? Is it's it going to be all right? It's going to be all right, Ollie. It's going to be all right. It hurts. Mr. Phillips says it was Roscoe that kicked him. Well, some animal kicked him. He's got a cracked shin bone. It was Roscoe. Your mule. Did you twist his tail? No, I didn't. I just went to the stall to borrow a piece of rope. Then he kicked me. Well, that don't sound like Roscoe. No, it doesn't. You sure, son? Well, I don't know who kicked me, don't I? Now, hold on, Ollie. Hold on. You can argue about this after I get a cast on his leg. Well, it was Roscoe. You got no right to accuse my mule. Later, boy. Mr. Gibbs, you go back on patrol. Well, all right. Roscoe don't never kick without a good reason. Doc, I'll give you a hand with that cast. Yeah, the plaster of Paris is in the cabinet. She's got a bad cut here. We're going to have to work around it. Am I going to die of blood poisoning? No, Ollie, you're not going to die of anything. Now lie down. Mr. Herb? Yeah? If I'm unconscious when my pop comes home, will you explain to him just how it happened? I'll explain to him the way you say it happened. Hand me that can of ether, will you, Ryan? Ether? What's that for? Now, never mind, Ollie. It won't hurt a bit. It won't feel a thing. Mr. Woods, hold the paper and come in here. What's up, Mr. Derman? 
Shotgun Gibbs mule just kicked Ollie Burton and broke his leg. Take this down. Yes, sir. The mule, ridden by Chief Deputy Gibbs, is a vicious and dangerous animal. Today, Ollie Burton, a child, was almost killed, but instead is crippled for life. Mm -hmm. We demand that Marshal Wyatt Earp take immediate action. Now, put that in a two-column box on the front page and use this headline. Earp's deputy responsible for crippling child. Well, Ollie ain't crippled. And we only got his word for it that Roscoe done it. Calm down, Wim. Well, I'm gonna go over there and fix that nugget editor right now. Mr. Gibbs. Look, this is just the kind of reporting that Mr. Klum likes to catch the nugget printing. Mr. Klum is gonna fix them in his paper. Mr. Klum? Well, how do you think Roscoe feels about it? Mr. Gibbs, Roscoe is a mule and he doesn't read newspapers. But he'll know it if folks is turn against him. Well, beating up on Dameron isn't gonna change anything. Oh, that drunken fool has done it again. He stuck his chin way out this time. Uh, Mr. Gibbs is might upset. I darn sure am. Well, you've got every reason to be, Mr. Gibbs. Oh, I got a complete statement from Dr. Goodfellow on the extent of the injuries that Ollie Burton suffered. Crippled child, indeed. Oh, that boy's no more than a tough little hoodlum. I wouldn't believe him on an oath. And why do you say that? Well, why, you know that boy's a hoodlum. No, I don't. He acts more scared than he does tough. He hasn't got a mother. His father's hardly ever home, and when he is, he treats him too rough. Not rough enough, you mean. Mr. Gibbs, what I want from you is a statement denying that Roscoe is vicious. Vicious? Why, that mule so gently sickening. While he works as a water boy out at the Tough Nut Mine, I'll take a ride out there in the morning to talk to the foreman. Fine, but my paper goes to press at midnight, Wyatt. As soon as I can get on the street, I'm going to be calling Dameron a liar and a fool. You want my statement about Roscoe's character? You go right ahead, Mr. Gibbs. Well, sir... Ever since I know that mule, he's had a heart of pure gold. Mr. Woods! Mr. Woods! Yes, sir. Listen to this. I read you. We have caught the nugget lion again. This happens so often that the readers of this paper may question its value as news. But Dameron has attacked an innocent mule. This is a new law, even for the nugget. There is deliberate lion slander in every sentence of the Nugget story. All right, all right. The Nugget is going to demand that Gibbs Mule be destroyed. Forthwith. Take this down. And the mule came back here, huh? Yeah, I figured he was too much for that boy to handle. Well, did you warn Ollie about him? Sure I warned him. I wouldn't have sold him the animal in the first place. Only he told me his dad was coming home and that he could use him. He sold Jake to a saddle tramp this morning. Well, if your miners couldn't handle him, you did the right thing. Well, I wasn't there, of course. So I can't swear to it, but I feel certain that Jake is a mule that kicked him. I think you're right. And by the way, what did Jake look like? Just a mean-eyed, lop-eared, black mule. No, thanks, Mr. Morgan. I appreciate it. Go on, Marshal. Howdy, Mayor Clum. Oh, hello, Shotgun. You seen the nugget today? Nope. What's it say? Better take a look. Mr. Dameron wants your mule killed. Oh, he does, does he? Well, if that don't beat all I ever seen. Any of you men here figuring on killing Roscoe? Oh, no, 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 no Roscoe. No, 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 no. Well, I thank you kindly. Come on, Roscoe. You, you get out of here, both of you. Oh, hello there, Mr. Damon. Me and Roscoe just come to have a little chat with you. I don't want to chat with you, not with either one of you. Well, we want to talk to you, though. 
I just want to introduce you to my mule over here. Roscoe, this here is Mr. Dameron. Look, you let go of me. The fella that wrote all them lies about you in this newspaper. Look, you get me away from this mule. He ain't gonna kick you. See? Help! Help! You don't need no help. Mr. Mr. Dameron, me. Right? Well, don't stand there. Do something! Put you in jail for this. I'll sue you. Well, you sue your head off. But don't you put no more dirty lies in that newspaper of yours about Roscoe. Uh, things ought to be a mite different now, Roscoe. Gibbs, what were you doing in there with Roscoe? Well, sir, I'll, I'll tell you just how it happened. Marshal, I want this man arrested. He beat up my printers and wrecked my property. Is that true? Well, yeah. Let's take a little trip over to the jail. All right, sir. And in his newspaper, the folks around here kill Roscoe. Got me a mud roused. So you have to go and do exactly what I asked you not to. Well, they ain't gonna, they ain't gonna hang Roscoe. No? Well, I'll tell you what you've done. I was out talking to Mr. Morgan at the Tough Nut Mine. He sold Ollie a bad acting mule yesterday. And he thinks it was that mule that broke the boy's leg. I knowed it wasn't Roscoe. I told you he's innocent all the time. Yes, you did. Sure you did. And everything would have been all right, but you have to go and lose your temper and give Dameron something to really sink his teeth into. You go and attack him, you and your mule. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Gibbs. Great work, sir. Great work. I want a full account. You're a big help, too. Well, what's the matter with you, Why? Dameron had it coming to him, and from all I hear, well, <laughs> Mr. Gibbs, you did a pretty good job. I'm proud of you, boy. I'm proud of you. Well, why it ain't. He thinks I've done wrong. Because now we have to try and find the other mule. Maybe you'd like to put up bond for Mr. Gibbs, $25. I'll be glad to, Wyatt. $25. Uh, what, uh, what are the mule? The guilty one. Thanks to your editorials and shotgun's temper, Dameron can magnify this into a major attack. Now we have to stop our really important work to try and prove that a mule by the name of Roscoe didn't kick Ollie and a mule by the name of Jake did. Uh, you think you can prove it? Maybe. If we get Ollie to tell the truth, it might save us a trip after Jake. You uh, didn't buy that mule from Mr. Morgan. No, I didn't. He says you did. Well, him and those miners are always playing jokes. You don't know anything about Jake? No, I don't. All I know is Roscoe kicked me, my leg hurts. Can't you leave me alone? Land's sake, Marshal. Quit pestering the boy. My pop will be home tonight, maybe. He'd lair at me good if I did anything without him saying so. I couldn't buy no mule of my own. We're wasting our time, Wyatt. Good day, ma'am. I'm sure the boy's telling the line. We'll have to try and find that mule. You doing this just to clear Roscoe's name, Wyatt? No, it's important to expose the nugget to the town. When a boy tells a lie, it can cause trouble. But when a newspaper tells a lie, it can cause more than trouble. People are liable to find the paper a hundred years from now and believe it. Hi, 
Howdy, Mr. Morgan. Howdy, Marshal. We're going after that mule you sold to that saddle camp this morning. Well, he's got about a three to four hour start on you. Which way was he heading? He was heading south on the border trail. Thank you. Passed by here about an hour ago. We'd we'll like to find them before sundown. Ow, that stinks. Well, it's better than having an infection in that cut. Oh, look how he hears your paw. What's the matter with Ollie? Got kicked by a mule. Uh, it was Mr. Shotgun Gibbs mule, Pop. He broke my leg. Oh, he did, did he? We're not sure of that, Burton. Oh, he's just trying to make excuses for Roscoe, Pop. He attacked me. Yes, everybody's read about it. It's all in the nugget. Mr. Dameron is an alcoholic liar, and his newspaper is worse. Now, the boy's going to be all right. Well, why are you sticking up for Gibbs and his mule? Roscoe attacked me on purpose, Pop. That'll do. If you want my advice, you let the matter drop. Well, now, his leg's broke, ain't it? And he's my boy, ain't he? Yes, and next to Dameron, he tells the biggest whoppers in Tombstone. I'll look in on Ollie tomorrow. Good day, sir. I'll get the paper and you can read it for yourself. You tell me the truth, boy. Why, Pop? Cross my heart and hope to die. Oh, I don't have nothing against Mr. Gibb. Only his mean old mule Roscoe. Here's the nugget, Zach. If it's in the paper, I reckon it must be so, just like Ollie tells it. Uh, let me see what Dameron says. Oh, uh, much obliged for taking care of the boy, Martha. Right neighborly. Does it hurt much, son? Oh, a lot. Oh, what? This the mule? Yeah. Broke loose, head back to the mine. That's where I picked him up. Watch yourself, boys. That mule's a kicker and a buyer. Well, I've really got Dameron nailed to the barn door this time. Wyatt, you should have been a newspaper man. I state that Roscoe's innocent, and you go out and bring in the real culprit. Now, that's good reporting. Now, oh, wait a minute. We haven't got a confession from Molly yet, and you're sure not going to get one from that mule. What'd you say this animal's name was? Jake. Jake, huh? Yeah, Mr. Morgan at the mine said that he sold him to Ollie with a warning that he was vicious. Well, I'm going to have a woodcut made of Jake and print it on the front page. <laughs> oh, I'd love to see Dameron's skin out of this. You know the whole town's going to be laughing at him. Yeah, well, I wish you'd turn to something else, at least until the boy's father gets back and we get the truth out of him. Well, that's a lot of nonsense, Wyatt. We don't need anything from Ollie. The facts speak for themselves. Now, if you gentlemen excuse me, I'm going to write an editorial. Come on, let's get Jake over to the OK Corral. Well, what's, what's fixed in you? We've done cleared Roscoe's name, ain't we? Mr. Clum never knows when to quit. Well, Roscoe ought to have the whole truth printed about him. Mr. Gibbs, I have told you that Roscoe doesn't give a hang about what the nugget says about him. A mule is libel-proof. You can't slander a mule. Well, Roscoe has feelings. All right. All right, then. Roscoe has helped save American journalism. The nugget hangs its head in shame. That make you happy? Come on, Jake. Well, you hear that, Roscoe? You've done whooped the nugget. Now, now, now. Just don't go getting up again, big hit. Just mind your manners. <laughs> We found that mule that really kicked Dolly. Well, you better tell Zach Burton that. Now, is he back? He is, and I didn't like his attitude. Why, right, what do you have to say? Well, nothing yet, but he's righteous about things at the wrong times, and he's just gullible enough to believe everything he reads in print. You better have a talk with him, Wyatt. Yes, sir, I'll do that. Thanks. All right. <laughs> Roscoe, Pop? 
A nugget says it's vicious and should be destroyed. I reckon that's my job. I'm your part. What you doing here, boy? You'll bust that leg all over again. It wasn't Rosco that done it, Pop. I told a whopper. A mule named Jake done it. Oh, sure, sure. Please, Pop, you gotta believe me. It ain't fair to kill Rosco for something that Jake done. I was scared to tell you about Jake, Pop, but don't kill Rosco. He didn't do it. Get back, boy, back. Don't shoot, Pop. Please don't shoot. Zach, put down that rifle. That mule's gotta be killed, Marshal. I said put down that rifle. I just heard Ollie tell you that Roscoe didn't kick and break his leg. Well, don't pay him no mind. The paper said that Roscoe done it. Don't you think I can read? You see what happens, Ollie? You tell a lie and get the whole town believing it. Now you want to tell the truth and nobody will believe you. I don't care if you wallow me, Pop. Roscoe didn't do it. Well, what about the newspaper? They made up all that stuff themselves. Isn't that right, Ollie? Yes, sir. Mr. Burton, your boy told a lie. And the whole town's up in arms about it. That's only a mule, but if you'd have killed Roscoe, you'd have started something bigger that nobody could have stopped. I didn't mean to cause that much trouble. You get home. Do I get a licking? You get well, you get what you got coming. Now get! Go on, eat your supper, Roscoe. Twisted, shifty, double crossing John Laws, you are the worst. You never had any intention of marrying him up. Well, did you have any intention of breaking up your outfit of cattle thieves and murderers? That's not the point. Well, what is? You was in cahoots with that city lawyer. You still are. Well, let me tell you something, Earp. My boys have got every trail blocked. They have. Well, that's right, interesting. You're under arrest, Mr. Clinton. All right, sonny. Send for my lawyer. Not tonight. What do you mean? I'm holding you incommunicado for a while. On what charge? Threatening the life of your future son-in-law, Mr. Tom Ware. Well, Emma ain't marrying him by heaven. I got a father's rights to protect a child from making a mistake. And as for you, Mr. Hook, I'm going to whip you with my bare hand. Now, look, Mr. Clanton, I don't want to have to wrestle with you. Wrestle? I'm going to knock your ears off. Why you no good? Stunky! What a useless excuse for a marshal! I wanna leave you coming and get hold of you! Never suit Emma Clanton was the one respectable member of the notorious Clanton outfit. The girl's determination to reform her father, old man Clanton, had aroused Wyatt's sympathy. But her way of accomplishing what she wanted confronted Marshal Earp with a perilous choice. Got him all fed and watered for you, Finn. Well, that's fine. Look, Papa wanted me to tell you a couple of things. Number one, my sister Em is coming in from New Orleans. Oh, trouble. Number two, all guards are to remain out of sight. Number three, a guard is to be posted at the front gate, and that's to see that none of the men ride in drunk and... You got that? Yeah. Oh, one more thing. My sister Em is a lady, so there's to be no fighting, no shooting of guns, nothing like that around the bunkhouse or the corral, you understand? I've got to go collect Ike and Billy and deliver them to Papa sober so they can say howdy to sis. How come the old man put it all on you, Finn? Ringo and Brocious are in Charleston and Clowries are dipping cattle, so Papa says I'm it. You pass the word about sis here. Yeah. Here. And step it up, or she'll be here any minute. Just pump yourself, man. Now, you, you go out and watch them windows. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Come here. Can you see them crystals? I want every one of them crystals polished to lay shine like a diamond. Yeah. How about Miss Emma's room, boys? All right, Christopher. I 
plumb forgot that. Ooh, it ain't been touched since she left. Go get a clean mop and dust right. And will you stop fiddling with that doll? Yes, sir. And hurry it up. Yes, sir. Jeez. What's holding you up, Brad? I'm a coming, boss. I'm telling you, I aim to persuade that gal to stay home where she belongs. I thought I told you to move that thing. Now get a rug big enough to cover that wet spot. It'll never get dry by the time she gets here. Hold this. Now, don't drop it. That costs ten dollars. Hey, boss. Hawkins just sprung this from Tombstone. Well, it's about time. Brad, you do what you can now. I gotta put these flowers in Miss Clanton's grave. Fresh this time. If they hadn't been, I'd have pistol whipped that Hawkins personal. Here, you help the boys. Well, get at it. It'll take more than dust clothes and flowers to convince Miss Emmy. <clears throat> Awfully good supper. I haven't had food like this since I left. And my, isn't the Clanton family putting on airs? Well, it's all in your honor, Emma. Yeah, we missed you. Papa, most of all. You going to college, Billy? Well, I am. He figures that he's too smart already. Well, you got a big mouth, Ike. Oh, come on, Billy. He's only having fun with you. <laughs> what about you, Ike? I thought you'd be married by now. <laughs> <laughs> Ike married the kind of girls he runs around with nobody'd marry. Uh, shop Finn. Mind your manners. Yeah, I don't see you doing so good either. That reminds me. Sally's waiting. Papa, may I be excused, please? Sally's waiting. Gaileyville, Sally. <laughs> All of you is excused. Bye, Em. Oh, em and I want to have a little visit. Right. Bye, Em. Nice to have you home. Have a good day. Hey, All right, give me my hat. Oh, well, that's a good hat. Bye, Emma. <laughs> Papa. <laughs> What you looking at, Papa? You! You know, being in New Orleans has changed you. Oh, really? Well, you're much more grown up. You haven't fallen in love. Maybe. I'm not certain. Well, who is he? He's a lawyer. His name is Tom Ware, and he wants to marry me. But, but I decided to come home and think about it. Sensible. You know anything about cattle? No. Hmm. You ride a horse? Not very well. Hmm. Can you shoot a 45? <laughs> He's a lawyer, Papa. <laughs> hmm. Ain't, uh, ain't you still a mite sweet on water? Papa! Well, I'm just asking. Well, he's not sweet on me. Besides, he's a John Law. Well, he's a man, by Joe. You know, uh, I've been thinking, sis, maybe a man of my age ought, ought to take it easier. Are you joking me? No, I ain't. If and he'd just quit being a John Law. You know, I'd be mighty tempted to turn over most of the ranches to you and him. Mind you, up would have to quit. I wouldn't rest easy knowing a John Law is married to Mahoney's daughter. Papa, you mean it? You, you'd give up all this... Now, this... talk straight out of him. I know I ain't always been law-abiding. But you would retire? You'd, you'd, you'd break up the Clanton outfit? Ask her what he'll do. Oh, I, I just can't go and propose to Wyatt. I've got my pride same as yours. All right, won't think no more about it. Papa? Talk straight out of him. I'd marry just about anybody to get you out of the business you're in. You and my brothers. <laughs> right now, you sure do remind me of your ma. <laughs> but I ain't promising nothing in advance. No, of course not. <laughs> All right, I'll talk to Wyatt. Well, you can't run into him accidental out here. You better move into a hotel in town, uh, the best one. And don't you do no proposing. You just sound him out. A smart young lady knows how to do that. Your ma did. All right, Papa. I'll try. <laughs> I'll try. You sure do remind me of your ma.
I know you're not in love with me, Wyatt. But I have to find out if Papa really will retire and break up the outfit. Well, I sure hope he does. He's powerful and he's clever. But one of these days, his luck is going to run out. I wouldn't enjoy having to kill him. Well, then you'll help me. It'll only be a pretend engagement. You see, Papa's hinted that if you will stop being a John Law and marry me, he'll stick to his part of the bargain. I know it's shameless of me even to ask such a favor, but this could be Papa's last chance to quit. Miss Emma, I'm very fond of you. If you weren't a Clanton and I wasn't the Marshal of Tombstone, well, we both know. Look, honestly, I... I think you should go to New Orleans and marry the lawyer. Papa doesn't approve of Tom. <laughs> well, frankly, I don't think that he'd actually like me for a son-in-law either. Besides, this idea of yours might not prove that he's really willing to retire. Well, the engagement doesn't have to be announced if you're ashamed if somebody found out. Well, that's not it, and you know it. It's just that it's complicated and dangerous. So I'll help you. It's just that I... I want to talk to the old man first. Your father isn't the kind of a man to fool around with. You're welcome to the use of my name, but I think we ought to make sure it's going to work first. Thank you. I mean that. That guard of mine's got bigger ears than a tattletale woman. Sit down. <sighs> now, uh, did uh, him and you talk real personal? Well, yes, we did. Well, what did him say in plain words? Oh, just that uh, she was hoping that you'd retire. Fiddle. Well, it ain't neither of your school children. Why didn't you get down to cases? My deal with him was that if, uh, if you and her figured on marrying, and if you'd get shed of that star, well, then uh, I'd turn over the business to you. Lemonade for courage. That might make me a little bit dizzy, but uh, here goes. I've been thinking a heap about this family inheritance business, and I made up my mind. Now, what do you say about the deal? Well, if you really want to quit. Soon as you quit being a John Law. Well, all I have to do is resign, but it, uh, well, it may not be so easy for you. Why not? You know, the Brochures, Ringo, and the McClarys, even your own boys, they might make trouble. Not if you're smart. Now, I called you a lot of things there, but I never called you stupid. Well, thank you. Tom McClary's talking about pulling up stakes. Frank will go along with Tom. Ringo can be bought off. Might have to gun brochures and take care of Bean, but that ain't no problem. So what do you mean by take care of Bean? Well, you don't know as much about my outfits as I thought. When I and you start after Bean, we can send him up for 10 years without even firing shots. <laughs> Is Emma Clanton at home? No, she ain't. How about Mr. Clanton? He's busy. Oh, fine. Then I'll wait. Hold it, mister. You just state your business, and I'll see if the boss wants to be bothered. Is this some kind of a practical joke? My name is Ware. Tell Mr. Clanton and his daughter that I'm here to see them. I'm Clanton. Oh, Mr. Clanton. I wasn't expecting to have rifles pointed at you. How do you do, sir? My name is Ware. Oh, yes, Emma told me about you. Shy from New Orleans, ain't she? I don't quite understand, sir. 
Well, where is Miss Emma? She and I are engaged. Not anymore, ye. I called it off. You get. Uh, I'm Marshal Epps, sir. The things here are uh, a mite complicated right now. I'll take Mr. Ware back to Tombstone. Well, we ain't finished our business. Later, Mr. Clanton. I'm sure that Miss Emma will have a few things that you might want to explain to Mr. Ware. Oh, oh yes, well. Oh, well, well, you settle things with him, but I don't want to see him no more. Uh, Dr. Holliday is meeting us on the trail. I'm sure that he and I can explain part of this to you. I certainly hope so, Marshal. It's bad manners to point guns at visitors, friend. Why, you... Call it. Let's have no trouble. Get in the wagon, Mr. Webb. Very well. started for New Orleans. If she'll go. Well, why wouldn't she? Mr. Ware promised to tell her the truth about the way old man Clanton acted. She doesn't want Tom. She wants you. Oh, come on, Doc. If I know women, she's probably announced your engagement already. Try jilting Emma Clanton. You're hooked, one. That's nonsense. She knows I'm not in love with her. Look, you got this whole thing wrong. She's in love with Tom. There's not going to be any shooting about it, either. You stop playing with that gun and go take yourself a nap. When a man's tuckered, he, well, he thinks silly. Moratori te salatamus caesarem. We who are about to die. Will you stop it? Die or marry, it's not much of a choice, Wyatt. But I'll stand up with you at the altar or against the Clanton guns. I had to be honest, Tom. I'm just not sure I love you. Is it wider? I'm not even sure about that now. You must think I'm an awful fool. No. I think you're in love with Marshal Earp. He's everything I'm not. He can hold his own with your father and his gunslingers. Oh, no, no. It's not that. Let me talk to Wyatt. I'm so mixed up, I don't even know what Papa said to him. And why he's always treated me like just a sister. Just give me a little time. Time? Whatever you decide, I'll always love you. you. Well, that's just a notion. She's been using me to try and persuade her father that he should retire. That doesn't sound like Emma. Look, Mr. Ware, she's desperate. She's not thinking clearly. Well, I don't know. Oh, she said she'd talk to you. When? Right away, I gathered. Are you willing to help me with a little play acting? How do you mean? Let's go out the side door, I'll tell you. Talk to Emma. There's nothing to settle. I think there's a lot to settle. You don't love Emma. You just want the old man to give you a big spread. Well, what's wrong with that? He offered me 50,000 head of cattle and 5,000 acres. And you went for it? You're so low down you'd marry Emma for that? Well, sure. If she's fool enough to let Clanton buy her a husband, it might as well be me. Well, you filth. Gave him just what he deserved. He had a lot of temptation, Emma. That's no excuse. 
Will you take me back to the hotel, please? I'd like to get out of this town. Of course, dear. Doc, it's Wyatt. All right. All right. When's the wedding? No wedding. Not to me. I decided to take Mr. Webb. Miraculous escape. How did you manage it? Never mind. Here, put these on. If I know Clanton, he's going to send somebody to gun Webb. I may need some help to get him out of town. You get your hat and coat. Gladly. You know, I thought you'd either be dead or married. There they are. Tell and stay there. Mr. Clanton will be coming to see me. You two stay out of it. I'll send word when it's safe to leave town. Fair well, on. All right, you've seen men bleed before. Get them over to Dr. Goodfellow. Doc. Hey! I want to talk to you. Evening, Mr. Clanton. Don't you even and me. Some boys are sent to scare that no good lawyer and you shot him up. Another thing, where's Emma? Yeah, let's talk inside. Of all a twisty, shifty, double-crossing John Laws, you are the worst. You never had any intention of marrying Emma. Well, did you have any intention of breaking up your outfit of cattle thieves and murderers? That's not the point. Well, what is? You was in cahoots with that city lawyer. You still are. Well, let me tell you something, Earp. My boys have got every trail blocked. They have. Well, now, that's right, interesting. You're under arrest, Mr. Clanton. All right, sonny. Send for my lawyers. Not tonight. What do you mean? I'm holding you incommunicado for a while. On what charge? Threatening the life of your future son-in-law, Mr. Tom Ware. Well, Emma ain't marrying him by heaven. I got a father's rights to protect a child from making a mistake. And as for you, Mr. Hook, I'm going to whip you with my bare hand. Now, look, Mr. Clanton, I don't want to have to wrestle with you. Wrestle? I'm going to knock your ears off. Why are you no good? Stunky! A useless excuse for a marshal! One of these days, I'm going to get a hold of you, and I'm going to jump the very life! Who is it? Wyatt. Come in. Miss Emma. Mr. Clanton has men guarding the trails. I arrested them. His rig is out in the alley. These are his. Put them on. Emma, you still determined to run for it? Yes, tonight. Very well. My idea is that you head for the ranch. You drive. Tom, you act like you're drunk or asleep. I think anybody watching the trail will think that you're taking your papa home. It might work. If it does, you swing off the trail and shortcut to the Benson stage. All right. I think it's the only way to avoid more shooting, Emma. I said all right, Tom. Has the marshal any other suggestions? Just one. I think you should write your father a letter. Tell him that you love and forgive. In his way, he loves you very much. I've written. Would you mind giving this to Papa? Not at all. I wish you luck. Thank you. I'll be uh, following you with a posse until you get to the Benson Depot. Thank you, sir. Hi, 
Hiya, Doc. Hi. I assume they got away. Yep, safe on the train to New Orleans. Let the old man out. Where's that hurt? He ain't heard the last of jail and me. guns are right there, Mr. Clanton. Your hat and your coat. Uh, here's a letter from Miss Emma. Reckon I know what it says. I don't think you do. You better read it. Dear Papa, I want you to know that we forgive you and still love you. We hope we got your blessing. Tell Wyatt no hard feelings. All I do, my little girl still loves me. Him says tell you no hard feelings. But that don't go for me, Europe. You're nothing but a jib-headed Judas. Now tell me, Wyatt, how did you ever slick out of marrying Emma? I didn't. She loves another man. Always been on love, Doc. Let the cynics weep. Well, he cleaned up the country, the old Wild West country. He made law and order prevail. And none can deny it, the legend of Wyatt forever will live on the trail. Oh, Wyatt Earp, Wyatt Earp, brave, courageous, and bold. Long may his story be told. 